This was 2.30 a.m. this morning. This is the future state of the motion picture industry. Fifty-fifty by 2020 to get women to get the bigger budgets as well. It's very, very important that we put the stories in the hands of the people who own those stories. Good morning. You all have made the right choice. You are the smartest people at this festival right now, by the way, I'm just gonna say. Uh, good morning and welcome. I'm Karina Rotenstein. I'm the TIFF Industry Conference producer and welcome. We're so thrilled to see you. Uh, to begin, we would like to acknowledge that today's event is taking place on the treaty territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, Anishinaabe, and the Huron-Wendat. We are so grateful to have the opportunity to work in the community. I would also like to uh, take a moment to acknowledge our sponsors and supporters who make everything TIFF does possible. Our lead sponsor, Bell, our major sponsors, RBC, L'Oreal Paris, and Visa, and our major industry supporters, Ontario Creates and Telefilm Canada. Today's session is part of our Dialogues program and it is supported by Ontario Creates and we'd like to thank them for supporting this session. So first, a few housekeeping notes. Just a reminder, there's no professional photography or video recording allowed in the studio, but not to worry. We are live streaming and recording for TIFF. Uh, this session is blasted right now to YouTube, to our TIFF, Talk channel, TIFF Talks channel, and will remain online. So please, after today, just send, send all your friends to that link and it, to keep the conversation going. Please chime in with uh, any of our social handles, including t hashtag TIFF19 to keep the conversation going. This morning, we will take a deep dive inside Bombay Rose, the stunning animated feature debut by award-winning artist, director, and writer, Gitanjali Rao. Explore how, we are gonna explore how her vision was rendered to the big screen and the endless possibilities of animated filmmaking from its ambitious storytelling and artistic treatment to its production, co-production partners and technology. We are delighted to present a case study of an animated feature which was created with an artistic vision and cultural authenticity at every stage of its journey. Uh, screenings for uh, Bombay Rose for the first P the next P and I screening is today at 1:15 at Scotiabank Theatre, and our public screening is at 4:30, also at the Scotiabank Theatre. So please do come and check out the full film, and you'll know everything at that point. You'll be all knowledgeable. Uh, I'd love to introduce you to our esteemed guests over here. It's the wonderful team from the film. So sitting. Uh, one, two, three, four, over, <laughs> is uh, Mayank Patel. He is the co-founder and director of Paperboat Design Studios and an alumnus of Fine Art uh, College in Surat. Uh, some of his notable work includes the animated features Gupi Gavaya Baga Bayara and the animated series Bandur Ar Budbak. Uh, he's also produced, uh, he's also made uh, shorts and commercials for Cadbury, Nestle, World Bank, and others, and he is currently working on an animated series for Discovery Kids. Please welcome Mayank. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> Next to Mayank, mm -hmm. to his right and your left, is uh, Deborah Sate. She is the director and in international operations, at director of international operations at Sinistan Film Company. Sinistan champions new and established talent, developing, producing, and delivering groundbreaking productions. Uh, Deb uh, previously worked as a theater director and producer before moving to the BBC to become an award-winning TV producer. And before taking her role at Sinistan, she was the head of talent development and production at Film London, where she oversaw both short and feature film schemes. Welcome, Deborah. Moving down the list, uh, oh, 
across the list, uh, we've got PM Satish. He is the award-winning sound designer. He has worked across 30 feature films and 120 documentaries shot in various formats for broadcasters around the world, including BBC, NFB in Canada, uh, Channel 4 UK, National Geographic, and the Indian Foundation for the Arts. He most recently created the sound design for Bab Bahabu Bahubali, pardon me, the beginning and the conclusion, uh, Ashkat Virma's uh, Kalandali, and uh, Alan Mukherjee's upcoming Bah Bahmastra. Uh, please welcome PM. <laughs> And over here closest to me is Charlotte Uzu. She is, the, she is responsible for international development at Les Films d'ici. She structures the international financing of documentaries and feature films in, part with, in partnerships with co-producers and broadcasters worthwhile, worldwide. She also produced documentary and feature projects in collaboration with foreign authors and producers. Um, you may know her work, uh, including Waltz with Bashir, which screened here at the festival. Uh, Uzu began her career in the film and TV industry as an assistant, then production manager, and holds a degree in arts history, anthropology, production, and management. Welcome, Charlotte. Thank you. And this conversation will be carefully guided in the warm hands of Laura Good. She, is the ma she manages the programming and operations for TIFF's Film Circuit, the outreach division of the Toronto International Film Festival. She also programs TIFF's year-round short film series, Short Cuts, and is the lead programmer for the Toronto edition of the Human Rights Watch Film Festival, co-presented by TIFF. So without further ado, let's get right into Bombay Rose. Thank you so much. Big thanks to Karina, and thank you again to all of our esteemed panelists and to all of you who, who are here today. Um, you know, as Karina said, Bombay Rose is an absolutely breathtaking, hand-painted animation by an award-winning film team, many of whom are joining us today. We're so thrilled to be giving you this sneak peek of insight ahead of its North American premiere today. Um, it is based on Gitanjali's award-winning short true love story, uh, which was selected in competition at Cannes Critics Week in 2014. Um, the feature just had its world premiere at Venice, and we're very excited to be stewarding it to North American audiences just a little bit later today. I am really excited to talk to everyone on the team. We're going to be touching on everything from the artistry of artisanal animation, the possibilities of global reach in animation storytelling in the global marketplace, the scale and scope of this particular project, which is immense, um, international co-production, as well as the film's journey journey from its inception as a short film, as we chatted about, to its fruition as this beautiful feature. Um, before we get into the nitty gritty with all of our individual participants, we do want to show you a really special video project on the making of Bombay Rose. If we could throw to that now, that would be fantastic. Well, with that wonderful bit of insight, I'd love to go to each of our panelists and have you each talk a little bit about your role and how you came to be involved with the project. Um, I'd love to start with Deborah. If you could speak to working with Gitanjali on developing this project and at what stage you became on board, uh, that would be wonderful. Sure. Um, I'd just like to thank Mukesh, one of our assistants, who put that video together, who is a very fantastic human and talented at being able to explain the process of how this film came together. Um, we boarded the project as the producers uh, two years ago. Uh, Charlotte from Film DC was at NFDC with Gitanjali. They'd already paired together. And our Sinistan team were at NFDC looking for talent and projects at the Film Bazaar in Goa in November. And Tessa and Nupu uh, brought the project to me and Rohit Qatar, our chairman. And I think our team is very opinionated. It was one of the f one and only projects in which we were all unanimous that this project must be made. And we looked at various ways of putting the production together, but um, the board were 100% behind the fact that Gitanjali was an extraordinary talent, that her storytelling was unlike anything that was coming out of India at the moment, 
and that we should be the company that bring this film to life. And so the process of greenlighting it was quite easy. Um, we then, I think there was an extraordinary day in Paris in June where we officially put the project into production. And Gitanjali already knew that she wanted to work with Paperboat, who are a formidable animation studio in India. And if anyone is interested in utilizing them to make their own productions, quite extraordinary. And PM Satish, who is a very famous sound designer in India from some of the big blockbuster um, films through to a kind of internationally facing art house cinema. And so it, the team was set really. And for animation, the project was quite swift. I think we did it in 18 months. Yeah. Obviously the final stage, you always think you're gonna deliver it slightly earlier than you do. <laughs> that bit was uh, fun. But it has been, yes, there were fights and there were heated discussions, but the process of bringing Gitanjali's vision to life is an easy one because she is so clear on what she wants, on how it's to sound, on the music that accompanies the scene, how the credits work, how every little detail is to exist in the film because she knows what she wants. And when you have a visionary like that, whilst the arguments aren't, you know, fun sometimes, it's really easy to work behind a vision. It's just how you facilitate that. And so it was a real pleasure, actually, for Sinistan and us to make this film. And we're very, very proud that we did. Wonderful. Charlotte, I might ask you to feed in next as the French co-producer on the film. You obviously produced Waltz with Bashir and are very well-versed in international co-production. Could you speak a little bit about your role coming on board in international co-production and the strength of those partnerships and what that brings to the table? Sure. Well, maybe I can, I can follow up on what Deborah said about how we started uh, and how we met with Gitanjali. So we met with her in Cannes when she had her uh, short film called True Love Story at Directors at um, Critiques Week. And as Deborah said, her vision is, is so strong and so unique that we were really convinced instantly. And so we wanted to, to, uh, to support her and to follow up in order to make the film into a feature film. But as a French producer, we could bring some um, soft money and we could bring what we could find in France, but it was uh, mandatory to have a, a good Indian producer involved. And this is when Sinistan came on board. Um, and it's true that I think Gitanjali's uh, style is really unique. I mean, we saw the film Bombay Rose as a little diamond that looks like nothing, nothing else, because her vision is so strong, the style, and also the fact, I think what's really important to us is that um, people, the audience, can relate to Bombay Rose as a foreign audience and recognize India what they think they know about India, what they know about India. And I think an Indian audience can also really relate to it deeply. And the way Gitanjali tackles sensitive issues in the film, you know, there are so many issues uh, that are really sensitive and, and the, she does it in such a subtle way that I, 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 I really, I'm really proud of, of this film and, and proud of working with Git Gitanjali and the team. Um, so yeah, we, we got involved, we, we looked for international uh, partners and especially Sinistan, but Gitanjali had been in touch with them already. And uh, we gave some feedbacks on all the elements that existed, the artistic elements, um, the look, the script, all the different kinds of, uh, of elements you need uh, in order for the film to exist, and we tried to to give an, a foreign look at it in order to, to make it more international also. And um, yeah, and we did the, the sound work in France. I mean, some, some bits of the sound work, the, wick, the mix and the folly, which was quite surreal with uh, Satish at some point because we needed to get some Bombay sounds and in order to make it in Paris, we had to invent some, <laughs> some, some tricks, you know, to... to to reproduce the, the sound of the flip-flops and the, uh, 
you know, the jewel, the, uh, the Bombay jewelry was kind of, uh, of uh, a challenge, but it was, uh, it was fun. So in terms of co-production, the way we try to act is um, we like to be involved in, in unique projects, you know, that bring a separate and different uh, voice to the world. Um, and we started with Wells with Bashir. Uh, that's the first time we worked in animation because we used to do documentary and feature films only before that. And we really fell in love with animation because it brings such a different look at things and a different level of storytelling that since then we got addicted and we're involved in many, many animation films now. Wonderful. <laughs> I definitely want to come back to Satisha on some of that fully. But first I want to ask Mayank, um, at what stage did Paperboat Animation Studios become involved? I know Deborah mentioned you're a formidable force in Indian animation and that, um, you know, Gitanjali was sure that she wanted you. At what point were you sure you wanted on this project and what did that look like? So, so we met Gitanjali. I, I remember the first meeting at the Gitanjali at the cafe and she came and she said, you know, we have to do this film, guy. Like, we got the film. I said, okay, now, the film is unique, and we know that she's trying to, you know, to do the film from last many years. And now, it's the project is on, and then the paperboard is involved. So, we involved for the first day, and we got a deadline of 18 months to finish the complete film. And so we start post-mortem the, the whole techniques, like what exactly what is in her mind, and how, how the characters and the backgrounds, and you know, everything looks like, and what kind of quality she's, she's trying to achieve. So we have a biggest challenge is to maintain the quality, cost, and time. So we have to make sure that all these things should be in a, uh, you know, in, in, in the same range and it should be completed the film. So in the paperboard involved, we start hiring art artists, and then one by one we we try to uh, you know crack the style to understand the Gitanjali, what what she's what she's wanted and and how she's wanted. As an Indian animation, we know the we know the Indianization of the characters, okay, the characteristics. So, so it's like, so we have all the animators; they have acted actually, and then they shot themselves, and then we try to get the acting out of them, and then they start the animation. And yeah, this is how the how the paperboard. Then, then we start the color panels. Then you know, frame by frame animation. That is the biggest challenge. So we have almost painted more than a million frames. Oh my God. And so the calculation uh, of like five, five frames per day per artist, and we have involved of around 45 paint artists and 12 animators. And in the background, we have around uh, three or four people. Okay, where, you know, we have uh, all the layouts, we have around two or, two or three team teams. One production designer called Rupali, she's also there. She had a great help, and Gitanjali, she's very particular. She's very, she's a very detailed director. She knows what she wants. So she explained us very well. Okay, this is what I want, and this is how I want. Okay, we have to just get the process right. So we just get the process right, and then the film is like made. And that, that process had its challenges, because, uh, animation hasn't been done that way before at Paperboat. And so the artists had to be trained and then each group of artists found favor in particular characters mm. or some were dismissed because they couldn't get hold of the, of the right process in which to bring life into those characters. And whilst this is very gender biased, the girls mainly preferred painting or doing Kamla the boys preferred doing Salim, some preferred doing the cat, some preferred Mrs. D'Souza. And so through Paperboat and Gitanjali's trial and error, they found a process on the floor that enabled those artists to put their own acting into those characters, very much encouraged, encouraged by Gitanjali. But finding that schedule was probably the toughest thing yeah. that we had to face because it was a process of work that uh, Paperboat hadn't done before. Gitanjali knew it would work, but we had such a short space of time that there wasn't room for failure. But actually her way 
did work in the end, and it, it ended up almost like a live action feature in terms of her signing off each frame, each scene, each process. Wonderful, and it has that naturalism as well in its aesthetic, so that makes sense. Satish, I might throw to you. I'd love to hear a little bit about the fact that you were the sound engineer on the original short film. Uh, so how did that come about? How did you get involved with that short film project? And what made you know that you had to make the feature? Also, we really would love to hear about the Foley in London and how you made that sound like Bombay. In Paris, in Paris excuse me. <laughs> I have known Gidanjali for the last 15 years or 15, 20 years. We are really close friends. So my involvement uh, uh, in the film uh, goes from pre-production, when she was writing the script, you know, she'll come to us and discuss things in detail, and then we go back and forth. Um, I have done uh, two or three films, earlier films of Gitanjali, and particularly the short film, uh, True Love Story. So we have a methodology, how to go about sound, and uh, usually we, uh, she asks us to um, create sounds uh, for sequences independent of uh, anything without any discussion and then we get into a, um, a work. My, mine is a small team. I have a co-sound designer, Manoj Goswami, and uh, four or five editors. Um, True Love Story did not have uh, any budget actually, so, uh, so we had to find um, uh, off-peak hours in the studio and um, you know, work a little bit here and there. So it went on for a month or so. And then we did not have money to mix. So, um, so without a proper mix, we sent, uh, without any mix actually, we designed the sound and sent it to, for the um, Bombay uh, International Film Festival and uh, she won uh, the Best Film Award over there. So that brought in some kind of money. And then we went to a mixing room <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> mixed the film and it was selected for Cannes and um, so, we could send a proper mixed version to Khan. So this is how we have worked before. All her earlier films, short films, you know, there was, it's all just uh, drawn by her and uh, we did the sound. Um, so because of that, we have a, a, a clear understanding of things and uh, once we design sound, uh, uh, she will step in and then we will have elaborate uh, discussion on that and then we re-edit or work around things, um, uh, which I really find uh, uh, interesting uh, way of working and uh, sometimes very specific. So the most important thing is uh, um, Gitanjali is open to very many, any new ideas that we come up you know, with. Sometimes even we are not sure whether this would work and uh, then we would just tell her that, you know, it's not something that we really like but we just wanted to see your reaction. But she is just open to anything new and that really encourages us to come up with things. Uh, which is not the case. Most of the time, uh, directors would uh, be very pretty strong about certain things, and they would uh, uh, tell us that, you know, let's do this way, you know, before even uh, having a version of ours, you know. Uh, so this, I really love working with her, uh, this aspect that, you know, we could really come up with anything, and then there would be a discussion on that, and then we can alter or, you know. Um, so that openness is, in, is, is truly incredible. Um, then we stepped, stepped into this feature length, which is um, not just a, a longer length, uh, because we couldn't really uh, sustain the film with uh, the usual um, sounds that we have used in the shorter version. And we had to uh, really multi-layer it. And then we had the budget to go to France to do Foley. And <laughs> um, it's quite expensive in comparison to Indian Foley. And uh, going, to, uh, going abroad, we normally go to, go to Europe to do Foley because they have better studios and better equipment. Um, technically, it's uh, far superior uh, than what we get in India because uh, not that it, in India it's, we are not capable of doing that. It's just that there's hardly any budget for Foley kind of thing. Um, so people are not really doing the right job over there. So we decided, uh, like any other film where there's budget, you know, we can uh, afford a European um, studio and artist. So we went uh, to Paris, uh, and they have booked uh, one of the best uh, studios over there, and um, a young Foley artist. But then as we start doing, we realized that um, we have a film with a very specific uh, India-oriented, culturally Indian uh, film, 
and uh, the way of doing things on the street, poor people, you know, and the French Foley artist often uh, unable to understand even, you know, what we are asking him to do. I mean, for instance, uh, in India, when we, uh, when people cycle, you know, bicycles, you know, we pedal halfway, you know, many, many times when you have to slow down and, you know, in city, cities and uh, towns, you know, you have a very peculiar way of pedaling. And uh, I would ask the Frenchman to do in that specific way, and he just wouldn't understand. He thought it's just bullshit, you know. But and even, even the sound of the bike, do you remember, I, I got a panicked phone call from Satish in Paris, and he said, even the sound of the bike is wrong. So the sound of a bike is very particular in India, the kind of bike that we wanted, the kind of bus that we wanted, the kind of bangle that is on her wrist that we wanted. And so I, I it, it's, not the sa it's just not the same if you've been to India, if you've been to Bombay, you hear those sounds. And we wanted our audience to be in those authentic places. So we then talked. We had to borrow, <laughs> borrow bangles from uh, Charlotte and uh, yes. um, glass bangles, because the Foley artists would think that, you know, glass bangles, what is equivalent closest to material? So he would uh, bring some ceramic uh, cup holders, broken cup holders, and he would make, and by looking at that, I know, oh my God, I mean, what is he <laughs> going to create with this? But he says, oh, no, 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 I can handle it, I can handle it. So I have to let him try. But I, I was dead sure there's no connection, glass bangles and ceramic uh, handles. I'm like, they don't. Uh, but uh, poor man, he was really trying to help us, you know, get the right stuff. And then uh, finally I said, no, it's nowhere near. And then uh, Charlotte uh, brought uh, her own collection of Indian bangles. Uh, glass bangles, then the Foley artist wouldn't want to break it because he said, oh, no, it's my, our producer's bangles. <laughs> <you know?" laughs> so uh, I said, we have to break it and I'll replace it. Don't worry. I mean, it's really cheap. You know, glass bangles are the cheapest of bangles. And um, he still wouldn't do it. You know, he would just hit two bangles uh, each other <laughs> to create a breaking sound. And I said, no, I mean, this is nowhere near what we want, and then I broke a couple of bangles just like that, you know, and I said, now see the sound, how it, how it sounds, and just go ahead and do it. So uh, it's all cultural, and uh, we had a tough time actually uh, getting the right uh, uh, sound. So then we shifted to another part of the film where there's an Anglo-Indian lady uh, doing her, her own thing, so that I happily asked the Foley artist to do anything and everything related to that, because that's more like his field, you know. Uh, what they culturally, I'm sure they can, he can relate to that. Um, so it was quite an experience, uh, and I realized, you know, it's not about the technically uh, how well equipped the studio is or the artist uh, can create synchronized sounds, but it's when it's cultural, you know, it's better to uh, do it back home. And half the things we shifted back to Bombay, and I happily got uh, things done. I mean, like even for a cycle bell, we have a in India, people have a, a way of you know uh, ringing that bell, cycle bell, you know. So uh, I can't make somebody understand how that is, and I had the language problem, and I was just panicking, and, and I made calls to Deborah, saying that you know, oh my God, I mean, this is not going to work because um, uh, there's this uh, engineer who could speak a little bit of English, but when you have to communicate in artistic language you really need to have a grip of uh, the language. And so he can just translate the basics. Finally, uh, Charlotte so came. Half of the work in front of and on the, the producer, folly. I mean, nowhere the producer is sitting next to me and translating things. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was feeling very bad, but you know, that's how finally it worked. Yeah. I'm gonna jump in because I wanna make sure we have time to answer some questions from the audience. I just wanted to say it's really great getting your perspective, and I think it really speaks to what Atanjali said in the video about the importance and her commitment to having South Asian animators and South Asian sound engineers work on this film, and that's why it does have this specificity and authenticity, and so that really comes through. Um, we are going to open it up to questions from the audience, but first we wanted to throw to the final trailer of the film, just so that you can have a, the most informed possible sense when you're asking your questions. So if we could throw to the trailer now, that would be wonderful. Subcat to 
कहीं भी देख सकते हैं फिर समंदर क्यों वह सपनों की सीमा नहीं रहती मुसलमान छोरी को पटा इस पैसे से बोर का खरीद के गिफ्ट करो उसको अरे रुको सुनो सुनो with it, right? With that said, please raise your hand high if you have a question for any of our panelists. Do wait for a mic to be to you because we have content capture so that everyone following along online can hear. I think we have one ready right here. If we could get a mic to this gentleman as well. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Faye. I'm a writer and I, this, this is enchanting. This is lovely. Um, I'm curious about the process uh, of, the, of the story. If it if it evolved at any point due to uh, some technical elements, if the animation spoke to the director writer in a different way, or, or if there were any changes of a major sort to the story because of the animation. So, uh, Katanjali, when we received the script, it was almost fully formed. There were only a few adjustments that we made in terms of what happened in the script, but she did benefit from a number of labs uh, that she went on. She was part of uh, the CAN process where they kind of greenhouse talent that they want to uh, develop their feature careers, so she was part of that. Uh, there was some development uh, on an NFDC lab as well, but it wasn't until we signed off the script that the animatic was made. And the animatic is the black and white drawing of what is going to happen in the feature, which came after the script. So the script, lab, 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 her ideas, final version is signed off. Then the animatic is made, which is going to be the skeleton of the entire animation. And then from there, the animation is made. So once you're at the animatic stage, there's no changes. So that was a big moment for us, signing that moment off. Thank you. Do you want to go ahead? Hi, uh, hi my name is uh, Zubair, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a movie buff. I follow movies of the various countries, America, Bollywood, the Arab world, Europe. I've traveled to these countries. And um, my question is, um, at the beginning of the first cl uh, video clip, they said, um, Indian style of movement is not really uh, familiar to non-Indian people, and so the film is sort of a documentary to explain it. Is that, but why is that? I mean, Slumdog Millionaire was a, not a documentary, and it was a hit. I mean, there's no need for any explanation, so why, why in the animated story did they have to make it a documentary in order to get people to understand it? No, I don't think she means it in that way. I think what she wanted to articulate is that the way in which she tells her story of these migrants in this vast city okay. is through observation rather than invasion. It's a, it's a simple choice that she made oh. uh, in how she wanted to bring her characters and stories to life, that she takes a step back. So as you watch the animation, you will see traffic go past Kamla as she's making her garlands. That's what she means by the documentary style. She lets the characters' lives evolve in front of you on screen. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. 
So there's a narration. Of, there's a narration in the story, like a narrator. No, there's di there's dialogue, but okay. very minimal between the characters. Okay. It re she really leaves her artwork to tell the story. Oh, okay, cool. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions in the audience? Could we get a mic up front? Hi, Deborah and team. Congratulations on Bombay Rose. Thank you. It's had a fantastic run. I'm going to catch it today at TIFF. Um, there was a panel discussion yesterday at TIFF conference where the subject was, is the death of cinema being greatly exaggerated? Are people really turning away from the big screen? Given that more than half of the movie-going population is in the East, and you're um, for Sinistan's international outlook, can I ask what seems to be the barrier for movies produced in the East to find a legitimate market in North America? Like there have been movies ma made in India who have made remarkable collections in China, for example. Why hasn't that been able to, why hasn't that, why, is there, is there a, a glass ceiling that we're not able, is there, is that a question of transcending the exotic gaze uh, towards uh, movies that originate from India, are they looked at a certain way? Like that gentleman talked about Slumdog Millionaire. Um, why can't movies conceptualized in India sell in the West purely on their story uh, aspect and not just uh, here's a colorful story from a poor country? Thank you. Um, at Sinistan Film Company, we have two ways in which we enable audiences to come to films. So we have Sinistan AA distribution, and we release films like Gully Boy, Bharat, Stri, Bhattai Ho. Those are big Hindi commercial uh, films that do get released in the West and North America and do very well. If you look at the Gully Boy figures, we premiered it in Berlin. Its global box office was extraordinary. It hasn't yet been released in China. But if you follow the Hindi commercial films, there is an absolute market for it globally. Uh, it tends to be a diaspora market. And when you go into those cinemas, the cinemas have both diaspora, Indian, Pakistani, Bangladeshi audiences, as well as African and Turkish audiences. So that is one part of Hindi commercial cinema working globally. When it comes to art house, just like with every country, there are a few films that break through because they are exceptional. Bombay Rose is an example of that. Uh, another film that we released, Mukti Bhavan, Hotel Salvation, uh, which premiered at Venice as well. Um, Lunchbox is an another example. You just have to be very specific on who your audience is and compete in the market, which is aggressive. Does that answer your question? Thanks. One more question in the audience. Hi, thank you for coming to this panel and uh, sharing your behind the scenes experience. The, the film looks really stunning. Uh, my question is, um, I guess you said that before you used to produce more of like feature films and documentaries. So what has uh, your transition to animated uh, film look like and were there any challenges along the way? Uh, thank you for your question. Um, I think it's film, you know, so it's the, the process is similar, but at the same time animation takes longer and it's um, more expensive. So I guess it's a bigger, a bigger challenge than for the other films. But, um, you know, there's still a, a story to tell, a vision to support with a director who knows uh, what she wants in that case. So the process is, um, is, is very similar. I guess it's just that the challenge is, is bigger in terms of um, budget and, and, and um, workflow and, and time. For us, it was our first animation. And we did it because we think Gitanjali is an extraordinary artist. And if another came along like Gitanjali, I'm sure we would do that as well. And I'd love to extend that question to Satish and Ryank as well. If each of you could just speak a little bit about working in the animation space. And I don't know, Satish, if you work exclusively in the animation space or also on live action. Maybe we'll start with you. Um, in terms of sound, whether it's an animation or live 
uh, action, it's not really much of a difference. It's just that we don't have any sound uh, from location, so we have to create from like the entire soundscape. Um, but for this film, uh, it was um, quite different because uh, mostly atmospheric sound is what uh, we were counting on, and there's no not not much music in the film which are. Um, composed uh, to enhance uh, emotions. Uh, most of the music that we used are source music. You know, there's always source shown. Um, uh, and uh, 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 so the, uh, the role, conventional role of music, you know, we had to do that with sound. So just imagine there's this romance happening across the road and there's so much traffic in Bombay and we need to really figure out what are the sound elements that we are going to um, count on to, to create this, um, these emotions like love, longing, and frustration, uh, desperation, struggle in Bombay. Um, so we used uh, sea, sounds of sea, which is just the whole story is happening by the side of the sea, uh, for Salim, uh, the, the, the guy, um, and uh, for the girl, we used uh, sounds of uh, uh, mountainscapes and um, uh, wind, um, uh, palatial spaces, jewelries, whenever she gets into um, dream spaces, and then Salim's dream spaces um, are in, uh, related to Kashmir um, and the kinds of sounds that you have over there. And then the street sounds, uh, which are like, there's this popular Juhu beach, that's uh, the pretext in the film, like the backdrop. And the sounds we started separating from there to uh, to have the right emotion, you know, and then uh, the, the vendors' sounds, vendors' calls, flute, uh, sellers, um, and various kinds of sellers, you know, and uh, sugarcane uh, juice machines, which will always have um, uh, various kinds of bells tied to it. So th these are the things that we have processed and used as romantic sounds. Um, so it's quite unique for this film. This is not how we normally design sounds, and we use the technology like um, Atmos, Dolby Atmos, to create these things to envelop the uh, uh, hall uh, with sounds um, rather than, um, you know, um, lots of effects which are like action-oriented and things like that. There's hardly any kind of action in the film except what you've seen, some fight that was happening, a one and only action sequence. <laughs> so. Um, uh, so it was, it was quite different because everything has to be created, uh, had to be created with atmospheric sounds and, uh, uh, and to uh, effectively use uh, to enhance emotions, you know, that's very uh, different from any other films that we've done. Thank you. We are running down the clock, but I'd love to just have any last thoughts from my uncle on the animation space. Obviously, as the founder of Paperboat Animation Studios, that's where you work exclusively. Anything you'd like to leave us with? So I just want to say, like, we can talk about the film. It's a 90-minute film in the 18 months, so it's two days is also not enough to, you know, to talk about the film. But only as I want to say is, we wanted to make a different film from India, and we wanted to show to the world that it can be possible in India, okay, to do a different film, as the France is working on some different style, and the China is doing, US is doing, so paperboard and. So Indian cinema and Indian animation, okay, that is what we want to tell the world, okay, please come and make the films in India, okay, we have abilities, we have a talent, okay, which we can produce more films, okay, so, yeah, I think so, that is what, and yeah, please go and watch Bombay Rose, it's, you guys gonna love it, I'm, I'm sure. Well, thank you for making this beautiful film. And please hold your applause to join me in thanking our panelists today, and thanks to all of you for coming out. I hope you enjoy the conference. Conversation, and what an incredible opportunity to get a nice sneak peek. So today, 115 at Scotiabank for PNIs, all of you, and also the public at 4:30. Uh, thank you so much. And stay tuned at 11 o'clock, come back into this room. We are going to be talking about the stories of newcomers and immigration in uh, global metropolises right here with the filmmaking team from Rocks and Antigone. So please join us at 11. Thank you.